In 2009, 77 International traveled to Peru to meet EPAF, the Peruvian Forensic Anthropology Team. Before that trip, all we knew about forensic anthropology came from watching television. She's a young woman between 18 and 22, approximately five foot three, tennis player. Dr. Temperance. In shows like Bones and CSI, a brilliant and attractive scientist can identify remains and determine cause of death with nothing more than a fragment of bone and a strand of hair. So we knew that scientists who study bones can solve crimes, at least on TV. But we wanted to find out how this is used in the real world to help real people. <coughs> Jose Pablo, everyone calls him JP, is EPOF's executive director. Well, forensic anthropology definitely is not what you see in Bones and CSI and all those uh, TV series. We use forensic anthropology and archaeology to investigate serious human rights violations, primarily for disappearances. In 1980, Peru's military government agreed to hold elections for the first time since 1963. A Maoist group known as Sendero Luminoso, The Shining Path, opted out of the elections and started a guerrilla war. What followed was a cycle of escalating retaliatory atrocities between the government and the Shining Path. In 20 years, some 15,000 people, one five, went missing. It is obvious that 15,000 people cannot be kept in a secret prison somewhere or in a basement. These people are dead. People were literally taken and killed and dumped somewhere in a mass grave or clandestine grave anywhere. By the early 90s, the Shining Path was on the ropes. The Peruvian government established a Truth and Reconciliation Commission in 2001 to investigate the human rights violations that occurred during the war. But for the most part, the government preferred to leave well enough alone and focus on the future. For the individuals most affected by the war, it was not so easy. Can you imagine if somebody you love, or somebody even acquainted to you, just simply vanished? Somebody saying like, I'm walking out, I'm going to buy bread, and doesn't come back again. How would you feel? If you had a child that goes uh, out partying on a Friday night, and it's a Sunday, and this person has not arrived, has not called or something, you would be also freaking out. Like, so what is the path trying to do? What the path is trying to do is to bring some answers to families. Because most of these people were the invisible part of society, primarily Quechua-speaking Indians, people totally abandoned from the state. In the years since the conflict in which so many people were killed, Peru has undergone something of a renaissance. Fueled by its wealth of natural resources, Peru has been booming over the last decade and is among the fastest growing economies in Latin America. There's a conception in a way that is really a subliminal message being passed as if progress requires forgetfulness. So if you forget faster, you will, you'll get somewhere faster as well. And that is totally untrue. I think the most developed countries are the ones actually living with the past on a daily basis. Although the Peruvian government has gone through the motions of reconciling with the past, their efforts have looked more like an attempt to sweep it under the rug. They fear persecutions to their own people because, yes, it is true. I mean, a number of people um, that are now in government and have been in government before participated in a number of actions that ended with a number of things. Disappear people, kill people, whatever. I am not saying here that they were guilty of something, that it would be up to the courts to demonstrate, but that they participated, of course they participated, yes. I mean, that is a, an established fact. As you can imagine, the relationship between Peru's government and EPOF is often strained. EPOF is an independent, non-governmental organization that investigates and documents human rights violations. Not just to prosecute the offenders, but, perhaps more importantly, to provide closure for the families left behind. I think the most important thing is to uh, remember that countries that uh, do not have memory don't get very far. I think in order to get whatever you want to, to, to get, you have to understand who you are from where you come from and what actually happened to you, what did you do, or what other people did. It is extremely important to understand all these little uh, uh, blocks that, uh, that, that, that make who, who you are as a nation, as a country, is very important. I think that we as a path are contributing to that.
series, we follow Epoth as they travel Peru, trying to locate and identify the remains of the disappeared and in the process bring a sense of justice and peace to those left behind. And we explore the ways that dedicated groups of people are using forensic anthropology to confront the gravest crimes of the 20th century, challenging entire governments and forcing the world to examine the root causes of political violence.